Thank you. Um, so as Nicole said, I'm Nick Christian, Head of Product Engineering at Datacratic. Uh, Datacratic is uh, proud to be a built-in Montreal startup. We were founded four years ago here, uh, and today we have almost 30 employees, including a small office in New York and a couple of employees uh, in Europe. Uh, Datacratic has a, a real-time machine learning platform, and what we sell is products on top of that platform. Our products are mostly geared towards the digital marketing space right now, so we have audience data modeling, real-time bidding for display campaigns, and email personalization. I'll tell you a little bit about, uh, about those products uh, through this talk. So, why is big data exciting? Well, certainly exciting from, a, from an engineering standpoint. You know, Datacratic, we process trillions of events per, per month or whatever. Um, but the real, the real reason people get excited about big data, basically, is because big data can lead to big profit. But, you know, it's kind of like saying, Big plastic, you know, big data is a little bit of a, it's like, it's like a raw material. How do you get from, from big data to profit? So the, the first uh, sort of claim I'll make today is that data really kind of interacts with the real world when you use it to make decisions. This is the basic principle behind the Enlightenment in the 17th and 18th centuries, um, that you should use data to make decisions and, you know, develop a little thing called science along the way, rather than use your gut or tradition or what some Greek dude said. Um, uh, so humans, humans can use data to make decisions, but they generally use small data. Humans aren't very good at looking at, you know, million by million matrix and making a decision. Uh, humans use small data to make comparatively few big decisions. You know, you look at last year's, last year's quarterly numbers and you decide where to allocate this quarter's, uh, this quarter's budget. So, small data. When humans look at big data, we tend to look at summaries, you know, R squared or a couple small KPIs and we can make some some business decisions based on that. There's nothing wrong with that, it's perfectly legitimate use of big data, uh, and it fits in really well with sort of modern management techniques like Lean, Six Sigma, continuous improvement. Computers on the other hand, computers are really good at looking at big data, but we don't really, we don't really trust them to make big decisions. You know, we don't, anybody who's seen the movie War Games knows you don't trust the, you don't trust the computer with the missile launch codes, right? Um, so computers can, can use, lots and lots of data at once, uh, we can only really trust them to make small decisions. Here's a little, uh, little comment to make my point. Uh, my latest invention is the computer. Well, what's it do? It makes 10 million mistakes a second. Wouldn't it be easier to elect a president? <laughs> um, conveniently though, there are a number of use cases in which uh, making lots and lots of small decisions, uh, sorry, improving the way you make lots and lots of small decisions can make you a lot of money. Um, in a way, it's, especially if you bring a lot, of, a lot of data to bear on the problem. So some famous examples of this are Amazon or Netflix's recommendation systems, where they use a huge amount of data to make sort of incrementally better recommendations on a sort of per web page basis. Uh, Google's ad, uh, ad placement system is very similar. Clearly, there's no human making a decision about what goes on what web page, but by bringing a lot of data to bear, they, they can drive a, a lot of profit. So, you won't be surprised to know that Datacratic, as a machine learning company, kind of bets on this second uh, computers making decisions approaches. And uh, the main thrust of my talk here um, is what we like to call the machine learning value chain. So over the years, Datacratic has sort of evolved this, uh, this framework for how we, look and how, we, how we look at and build our products. And I just kind of want to walk you through this today. So you know, I've already said that uh, to go from data to profit uh, goes through making data-driven decisions. Um, so, if you have something like an e-commerce website, you want to build a recommendation system, the decision you're trying to make on a per web, per web page loading uh, basis is, well, what are you going to recommend to your user? And the data you have is going to be something like, um, you know, browsing data, what people browse, what people buy. So the, the framework that we, that we sort of step through is that the first step um, is modeling. You can basically look at the data you have and find the patterns in it, do some analysis, you can stop there and kind of produce some small data for human to make decisions on, um, or you can go to the next step. The next step is building machine learning algorithms that are able to make predictions based on your data. So an example of a prediction you could make off of this kind of data is, given this browsing history and this product, what is the probability that the user will buy this product? That's, that's where machine learning comes in, right? Machine learning algorithms are very good at taking data 
and running a, learning a model to make predictions. So now you've got these probabilities. You know what the probability is of purchase. Uh, now comes the decision. You know, the, the, the sort of naive approach is to take all the users and all the products and you compute all of the probabilities. For every user, you show them the five products with the highest probability of purchase. That's great. That's a very good decision criteria. But maybe you want to go a little deeper, right? Maybe the five top products are just all the same tie in different colors. So you want to say, well, okay, show different items of different colors of the same tie. Um, maybe the top five items that have been chosen are all very low margin items. So it's not going to be a very good decision if you just show someone, well, you know, people are cheap, they like to buy cheap stuff, we're not going to make a lot of money by just recommending this. So the decision layer is where um, you sort of bring in a little bit of financial analysis, a little bit of game theory, some regret minimization algorithms, that sort of thing, to sort of use the predictions to actually come up with a decision for what to show. And the final step in the machine learning value chain is delivery. You can have very, very good decisions, but if you can't actually uh, make the, the recommendations appear on the website at the right time, it's not, it's not really worth much. So delivery is basically the, the step where you take your decisions and actually get them to where they need to be. So that's the, the value chain in a nutshell. I'll kind of walk through an example. So why do we, why do we call it the value chain? Well, every step in this chain adds value. You know, data by itself arguably has some intrinsic value, probably sell it. Person and the next person probably needs to drive some more value than just selling it. Um, you can make some reports, you can look at it. Okay. Um, a model of some data also probably has a little bit of value, probably more value than just the raw data. Right? You can make some summaries, it's easier to reason about. You've added some value once you've made a model. Uh, a prediction, on the other hand, you know, it's starting to feel like a little bit more value. You can probably sell some predictions. Some companies uh, have made a pretty good sideline uh, selling credit scores. Right? The credit score is a really good example of a product which is basically just a prediction. 600, that's your credit score. Um, so, so, so predictions have a bit more value over a model. The model will tell you, well, these are the things that, that go into a credit score, but the prediction actually tells you what the credit score is. Um, and then going from a credit score to an actual decision to give credit or not, that's, that's incrementally more value. Uh, and then obviously you gotta, you gotta deliver the decision to the right place. So uh, value builds sort of as you move across value chain. Uh, and just like a chain, uh, it's, uh, it's, as, it's as strong as its weakest link. You know, you can have the world's best predictors, you can have the world's best decisioning engine, delivers the data, the, the decision to the right place at the right time, but your data is not very good. Well, no, no big value. <laughs> um, similarly, you know, you can have a very, very good prediction system uh, and crappy decision rules. We've encountered this in the past at Datacratic, you know, very high performance model, super high scores on all the, all the metrics we needed. Uh, and the way the, the predictions were applied, really economically suboptimal, terrible results. Um, and the last step is, is a little bit obvious. You know, you could have the, the world's best uh, algorithm sitting in a lab making excellent decisions, but you can't deliver the, the results fast enough or to the right place or in the right format. So you can't derive any value from it. So value increases as you move to the, to the right. Um, and you, the value that you can deliver is only as good as the weakest. And, and what, why, why did, did we choose to break up, break up the world in, uh, in these five steps? Well, because it turns out that each step requires a slightly different skill set. So modeling, your typical sort of data science skill set, right? Analysis, data cleaning, visualization, um, uh, an ability to sort of do hypothesis testing. <coughs> Prediction is where machine learning comes in. This is sort of Datacratic strong suit. Um, building a machine learning system is not quite the same skill set as doing sort of raw data science. Um, decision, decision engines are also not really a machine learning problem. Decision engines usually involve game theory, <coughs> control systems, some financial analysis, a lot of domain analysis. Um, and delivery tends to be a sort of pure software engineering problem. So software engineering kind of permeates this whole, this whole chain, because obviously you have to write software to do most of these things if you're a software company. But the challenge in delivery is primarily a software engineering challenge. So at Datacratic, we found out that you know, we want to excel in each of these categories, and we have different people with different skill set working in each of these categories. <coughs> so as an example of how you can use this framework to decompose a problem, I'll use real-time bidding. So for those of you who don't know, um, every time you, you load up a web page, um, as the page is loading, there's an auction going on in the background. And there are many players uh, all currently bidding 
to, for the right to show you an ad. So whatever ad you see, it's the person who's willing to pay them, or the person, the company who's willing to pay the most to show you an ad. So this is a sort of real-time bidding. Um, if you're actually wanting to be one of those companies who, who bids and figures out how much, uh, be one of those companies who bids, what you want to do is you want to figure out what the right value is. How much do you want to bid for the right to show an ad right now? So let's say you know, you're on lapclass.ca, it's three in the afternoon, taking a little break, checking out the hockey scores. So what does the person bidding know about you? Well, you're in Montreal, it's 3 p.m., it's the hockey scores, maybe they have a little bit of information about what you browsed recently. So the decision is how much do you bid? This is the decision you need to make. Um, so stepping through, stepping through the pipeline here, the data, it's gonna be fairly big data, is data about every ad that you've shown and every outcome that has come out of that. So I showed an ad, it was 3 p.m., the person was on such and such site, um, the person was at such and such, such, such and such place, did they click or didn't they? You know, millions and millions of records like this. At the modeling stage, you sit down, do some data science, what matters? You know, does time of day matter? Does the site matter? Does the subdomain matter? Does the first part of the URL matter? Does the number of ads I've shown matter? All, all this sort of thing. Um, and you use that knowledge to build a predictor. In this particular case, what we want to predict is how likely is this user right now to click on this ad? Or to click on this ad and buy something? That's the, that's the core prediction. And the great thing is that the um, machine learning team can focus just on making an awesome predictor. Feeds that, that prediction into a decision. The decision is how much to bid. How likely is someone to click and how much to bid are two fairly different things. I mean, obviously, the more likely they are to, to, to click, the more you should bid, depending on your philosophy. But um, the question is, what is, what is the relationship between those two? At this point, you need to start taking into account some other constraints. You need to start taking into account how much money you're trying to spend. Um, how, how likely it is that you're going to find other opportunities to buy impressions with the same likelihood all these sort of financial and domain-specific concerns go into the decision layer. And then, at the end, uh, you need to actually deliver your decision. You need to actually bid. And real-time bidding, as you can imagine, it happens every time anybody loads a web page. You have opportunities to bid hundreds of thousands of times per second. Turns out the software to do that isn't particularly easy to come by. When we, when we started out, uh, there was no open source software to do this. So Datacratic, we're, we're big fans of open source. So built such a platform, we open sourced it, it's called RTB Kit. Um, you can check it out at rtbkit.org. But the delivery in this case was a major challenge, right? We had to build a system that was not only able to collect data, but also make decisions multiple hundreds of times per second, hundreds of thousands of times per second, with a fairly short, uh, fairly short latency. Um, the thing is that at, at Diacratic, we have different teams working on all these different, different steps, right? The, the machine learning team can excel at making um, models that have very accurate probability predict, uh, predictions. Um, the product team can excel at uh, figuring out how to plug that into a decision framework. And the platform team can excel at making a high performance uh, real-time bid delivery system. So what's the, how does this all sort of combine together? Well, we use big data to drive big value. We can drive a 50% reduction, which is fairly impressive, uh, in cost per action. So if you're running a campaign and you're trying to you know, drive clicks to your website or drive purchases, the basic metric you want to use is cost per click or cost per action. Compared to an optimized campaign, you know, you can drive 50, 60, 70% cost reductions. Um, so, so it does work. So basically, you know, how do you go from big data to profit? There are multiple ways you, you can go through this. You know, you can go through making small data summaries and letting humans make decisions, or you can apply computers directly on the data and have them make the decisions for you. Uh, at Datacratic, the answer for us is, uh, is the machine learning value chain. Ah, uh, yeah.